everybody, welcome back to another episode of Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing a medication known as valproic acid. Its brand name is Depakine. Now before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. So valproic acid is a carboxylic acid and anti-epileptic agent. Its mechanism of action is currently unknown, however it's thought that its activity is related to increasing GABA in the brain. In terms of indications for use, valproic acid is indicated to be used in the treatment of absence seizures. It can be used to treat a complex partial epileptic seizure. Valproic acid can be used in bipolar 1 disorder. And it can actually be used prophylactically for migraines as well. Now before somebody was to use valproic acid, there are some contraindications they must clear, as well as some precautions and warnings that they should be made aware of. Valproic's use in migraine prophylaxis would be contraindicated in women who are pregnant. And it would also be contraindicated in women who are of childbearing age who are not using effective contraception. Patients who have hepatic disease or significant hepatic dysfunction would not be able to use valproic acid. Patients with a hypersensitivity to valproic acid or any other component of the product would not be able to use this medication. Patients who have urea cycle disorders unfortunately would not be able to use valproic acid. And finally, for contraindications, patients with alpers hutton Loscher syndrome would not be able to use this medication. Now, in terms of precautions, valproic acid is on the Beers criteria, which is a list of medications that the elderly population should either avoid or use cautiously. The impaired psychomotor function, syncope, and ataxia that may be caused by this medication would concern us about potential falls in the elderly population. Patients with epilepsy using valproic acid should not discontinue the medication abruptly, as status epilepticus has happened in patients who have done this. In patients receiving valproic acid, it's not recommended that they receive carbapenem antibiotics as it could result in loss of seizure control. Some patients have experienced ammonemia with the use of valproic acid with or without encephalopathy. Hypothermia has been reported with the use of valproic acid. In some situations, the medication would have to be discontinued. Dose-related thrombocytopenia and abnormal coagulation has also been reported with the use of valproic acid. Higher doses would put patients at an increased risk of experiencing elevations in their liver enzymes as well as that thrombocytopenia. Potentially life-threatening drug reactions with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms, also known as DRESS, has been reported. Some patients have experienced suicidal thoughts while using valproic acid, so patients at an increased risk of suicidality should be more closely monitored. And finally, for precautions, the elderly population would require smaller initial doses and a slower titration towards their maintenance dose, as they're more susceptible to somnolence. Now, once somebody is cleared of the contraindications and made aware of the precautions and warnings, and they start using valproic acid, they can expect to receive their dose in tablet or capsule form. When treating absence seizures, the initial dose would usually be 15 milligrams per kilogram per day. We would want to give this in two or three divided doses if the total daily dose is over 250 milligrams. And then the dose can be increased by 5 or 10 milligrams per kilogram every week until seizures are under control. Occasionally, patients will have to stop their upwards titration due to tolerability of the medication. And the maximum dose would be 60 milligrams per kilogram per day. For complex partial epileptic seizures, the dosing would be the same except for the initial dose. Instead of using 15 milligrams per kilogram per day, you can use 10 or 15 milligrams per kilogram per day. When patients are using valproic acid for its off-label use in migraine prophylaxis, they can use 800 milligrams daily. Some patients will go as high as 1,000 or 1,500 milligrams daily to try to keep the blood level of valproic acid above 50 milligrams per liter. Now, as with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using valproic acid, so I'll list off some of those here now. 3 to 8% of patients may experience peripheral edema or swelling. Alopecia can happen between 6 and 24% of the time. About 6% of patients notice a rash. Anywhere between 4 and 47% of adults who use valproic acid notice a weight increase. Up to 23% of patients may notice abdominal pain and about 5% may experience diarrhea. Up to 23% of patients may notice abdominal pain, and 5% may experience constipation. Up to 23% of patients may notice diarrhea, and between 22 and 48% will experience some form of nausea. 
ataxia, dizziness, headache, and insomnia have been reported. Somnolence and tremors seem to be common, coming in at up to 30 and 57 percent respectively. Six percent of patients may experience mood swings, and between 7 and 11 percent may experience a feeling of nervousness. The more rare but serious side effects would be heart palpitations, tachycardia, encephalopathy, loss of hearing, and finally hyperammonemia, which would be high ammonia. That's all we're going to talk about today with valproic acid or Depakine. As always, I'm thankful you took the time to combine and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.